Hi, everyone. Welcome to our virtual class, April 28th. Um, I hope everyone's having a great day. And I know some people are just joining us and their audio is getting connected. So today we're going to try and make three cards from the um, craft kit that uh, we're also going to use at our next class, so in two weeks. So I showed you some of the samples if you joined us at our last class and the sort of it's a masculine theme because uh, Father's Day is coming up. So we thought, well, why not try and make some cards for Father's Day? Um, so the other thing, just before we begin, I don't really have our class a month from now planned yet. So I was hoping that if you had any ideas, you could just put them in the chat. And then uh, maybe I'll pick something from one of the themes or if you wanted um, to play around with some specific either die set or um, product that you haven't really worked with. Um, so let us know in the chat. Think about it as we go through and I'll try and remind you or uh, say it again as other people join us. So let's get started. I'm going to switch my cameras and um, we'll go through what's in the class or in the kit, sorry. All right, so these are some of the cards or the cards that we hope to make today. This is a boat card. And then we have an airplane card and we have a fish and turtle card. So the kit um, that we're going to use today is still available on our website. Um, so if you have chosen not to purchase it yet and wanted to after the class, then these are the things that you get. So you do get this stencil. It's a seven by seven stencil. And we'll, as we use it, I'll talk a little bit more about it if you have a smaller machine that you might be using. You do get uh, this little die set. It's an anchor. It's called um, Seaside Girl. Um, so it has an anchor and it has a little wreath. They do go together, I guess. This is a little wreath if you wanted to put it, but I also thought this is perfect. It's about an inch in diameter and it would be great for Christmas. So I'm thinking if you have a door die or something, you can put a little wreath on the door or on a window or something. So I'm sure I'll be using it in an upcoming class around Christmas time. And you had lunch with so um, I hear somebody talking. I'm wondering if everyone can just mute themselves. Um, then it'll just be easier. And then this is a paper pack. So this is one of the Chow Bella paper packs. It's called Sign of the Times. And this is um, the A4 size. So it's just slightly larger than eight and a half by 11. And um, it has multiple things in it. So this is a brand new pack. In the Chow Bella paper, it's very nice. It's a matte paper, but it's a great weight. Um, it's 190 gram square. Um, and all of the pages are double sided. The nice thing about the Chow Bella pack also is that they're double sided and you can use what's on the front. So we're, we're not using these designs today, but you can definitely use them. And they, they combine background papers with elements or design elements that you can use for your card um, cards. So today we're not this, we're gonna use this design in uh, the class in two weeks. And I'll show you those samples at the end. Um, and you can see some beautiful background papers. We're going to use, I believe we're gonna use, yeah, so I think we're going to use this little note. We're going to use a bigger one, but you can see this is the card we're going to make. So we're going to make a little bit bigger plane, but you can see you also get smaller elements. So similar designs, but different sizes for each of the elements. You have some tag type designs, but you don't really have to use them as tags. And in another, um, the next class, we're going to cut, cut a piece off the tag to use with a card. Now these pages are called sign of the times. Um, this is sort of anatomy, heart, skull. It, so when I was looking through this pack, I was thinking, you know, it would actually lend itself to graduation theme as well. So even though we're using it 
um, for men's cards today, it could be graduation, particularly if somebody's into science or, or space or anatomy and they're in the medical field or nursing field, um, then this would lend itself to graduation um, for them. And then we're gonna use this design today. And we're not using this one, but you get another speedboat, some lovely background paper if, you're, if you wanna use that. And here's some more smaller tags, different size elements. And then you also have always a background page. These are two larger elements and we're going to use this one um, to make the fish and turtle card. Um, it's a lovely angel fish. So we're gonna use that one. And then you can see on the back, so we're, it's a background uh, page. And then here's the turtle we're going to use. So you can see we've kind of gone through the whole pack for those of you who um, haven't decided to purchase the kit, but are just going to use things from your stash for the class today. And I did check out the Facebook page and people were making great cards. So I was, I was very happy to see some of the designs um, that everyone's been making and they've been posted on the Crafting with Ecstasy. I think that's the Facebook group. So continue to do that. It's great to see that people are, are making some nice designs from um, the class. All right, this is the last page. And you can see we're gonna use this element in uh, our cards today, but you can see there's another more a sailing ship up here as well. So you can use, um, if you wanna follow and make the actual designs we're making today, or if you wanna choose a different element, it's totally up to you. So I thought the order, oh, and then I showed you the stencil, yeah. So I thought the order we would go in is we would make this card first, and then we would make the boat followed by the plane, okay? So if, if um, you're wondering, if you're gonna have enough time to spend with us today and you, you only wanted to focus on one, that's kind of the order, okay? So what we're going to do first is let's make this card. So um, you want to find that element and we're going to cut it. So this, this is a five by seven card. I'm just gonna find it here because I flipped everything over. And it was on the page with the two elements. So it's the largest elements that you get in this paper pot. So I'm just gonna put my papers aside unless, you know what, why don't we cut everything out and then we have it. So we need to cut the boat and then we need the plane. And the turtle. So the turtle's on that sheet. And the plane is on this sheet. So why don't we cut everything out? Um, when you're using pages that have multiple elements and also have the backgrounds, I'd like to just cut the element out. And so if I'm going to cut this plane out, because I mean, I'm going to, I know I'm using that today. So I like to actually cut it out sort of with my scissors and then I'll trim it with my trimmer to make it straighter and get um, to trim it off around the design. But at least that just leaves my, the rest of my paper intact. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So this is my turtle element. I just, I'm pretty sure. Nope, that's not the one I need because I need a smaller one. All right. This one you could just take with your paper trimmer and cut. Um, since I tend to use a guillotine, I will just cut it out. Okay, now where's the rest of my papers? Okay, now I'm trying to find my, oh, here we go. This is a turtle. The turtle's on the page here with the sort of astronaut on the right-hand side. We're actually gonna use that design next week or next week, next class. And so I'm just gonna cut this turtle. So from this paper pack, you can get many, many cards. The other um, 
thing you can do with paper packs, this one has a lot of elements, is you can make different albums. And I made a, a an album with a different paper pack from Chow Bala. So maybe we'll do that at one point in the class as well. It'll be a several part uh, class because that takes a little bit longer. All right. So I have, I just need my boat. Ah, there we go. Okay, so the speedboat here is on the page, has diary on the right hand side. So again, I'm just going to cut this out. All right. So let's make sure I've got everything. So I've got my turtle with my fish. I've got my boat. I'm gonna need a background piece for the boat, but we'll, we can always get that later. I've got my plane. So I think we're good. And you can put, if you found them all, you can put your page, pages, the leftover pages aside. I know my floor. All right. So the first card is actually a five by seven card. So if you want to go ahead and cut your, it's a white card. I used a white card, but you could mat it on a different color card. It doesn't matter. Um, but cut a card that from an eight and a half by 11 sheet, then um, what you want to do is cut it to seven inches by 10 inches and then just score it and fold it in half. So I have, I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Get my scoreboard out. I've got mine cut because I do use a large guillotine. So it's too hard to have all of my things in front of me. Um, all right, so this is my scoreboard. And then I'm going to just score it at five. I use a stylus, although there is a scoring tool on the scoreboard. And um, we do have several scoreboards available on um, the website, accessivecrafts.ca or .com. And they tend to, there's one from Nelly and one from Hunky Dory. And I'll eventually do a video showing how to use the different scoreboards. They do come with both centimeters and um, inches. This is an older uh, version that we had before. Um, there are also different sizes. For the most part, I use a smaller one, but um, a larger one is also handy. All right, so I'm going to, in the, while I'm here, I'm going to score all my cards. So you may want to um, cut all of your cards as well. So two five by seven cards, and then we're gonna make the one A2 card with the plane on it. So that's just half an eight and a half by 11. All right. I'm just gonna sort of crease my folds here with my scoring tool. So that's kind of, you can use that as a bone folder as well. And then I'm just going to do this one here. And again, uh, we go through this each time we have a class, but when you score in your score line, fold the design away from you, and then you're less likely to have any ripping or tearing along the fold. Okay. So I'll give you a few more minutes to get that done. I'm going to just check in and see if we have any ideas in the chat. Okay, yeah, grads, people are saying good idea. Any person? Oh, people like Chow Bella, okay. Um, all right, so we'll keep going then. Okay. So 
The next thing we want to do for this card is we're going to trim. So you can see this element is much larger. You can see I can put my card right on it. So um, when I use a large element and I don't want to make this size card, then I try and look at the design and see what I want to focus on. So you can see I wanted the fish. I really like the angel fish. I don't know if anybody has gone scuba diving, but I have done uh, some scuba diving and the angel fish are just beautiful. So I wanted to focus on the fish. I want to make sure they were in my, in the main sort of focus of the card. So I want to make sure when I cut, I'm going to uh, get the fish in. And then the other thing I thought, okay, if I put this on my card, then I wanted to make sure that I could also get the seahorse in. And then there were some fish up here in the left-hand corner. So I wanted to make sure we could somehow see that. And then um, that was what I kind of wanted to get into my design. So sometimes what I do is I cut it to a certain size and then I trim, trim, trim. And you can see that I didn't leave much of a border along here because I wanted as much of the uh, element to be seen as possible. So now you can, you can, sometimes what I like to do is put my card on my design um, or this, this on, maybe trim it off a little bit because I know I'm not gonna use that. And then I kind of just use a pencil to um, mark where I want it to go. So I'm gonna trim this down with my guillotine here and then we can go a little bit further. I'm gonna just trim it. And then I'll show you how I, I know, okay. All right, so this is gonna be left over. Now you do remember when you cut, although you have this cut off, the background paper, you, you might wanna use it for the inside of a card, just as another little uh, decoration on the inside. So I'm not gonna throw those away just yet. All right, so I have my five by seven card here. And I do want my fish. I think I might have to trim this a little bit. So you can see if I'm using my design here, I just got it. I just have to find my pencil. I thought I just had my pencil. All right. Not sure where my pencil went, but oh, I'll have another one. Okay. So if I kind of just line it up with my, how I want this to be, then I can see, okay, I'm just going to make a little pencil line there so that it has a little bit of a border. And then I might push the, pull this down and just see. So now I can just mark here because I know that's kind of the same amount in. And then that, so now I think I'm gonna trim now. And then I can always adjust again later. So because if I cut this one off, if I cut this line first, I'm going to cut off my pencil line here. So I'm going to cut this pencil line first or little pencil mark. So I'm just going to line it up. All right. And now I'm going to trim here. I'm getting pretty close. All right. So now I'm going to see how did I do? Oh, that's pretty good. Actually, it's not exact. I'm going to trim a shade more off. I'm going to take a shade more off the bottom, just a shade. So it just makes an even mat. And that's the nice thing about like a small guillotine like this is that you can actually get very, very thin. You can see how thin my little strip is um, without ripping your paper. 
I mean, you can do it with a paper cutter, but um, especially if you have a sharp knife or yeah, a sharp blade, um, if you don't, then sometimes you might fray your paper. All right, so I just have a tiny little border, but that's what I wanted. So I'm good with this down, cutting uh, it down to size. So hopefully everybody's got their sort of the, the size they wanted. And then what we're gonna do, I did um, ink, oh, it looks like I inked it a little bit. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just gonna leave it. Um, but we can attach this to our card with double-sided tape. And then I'm not gonna lose it in my pile of papers here. You can also use glue. The um, Chow Bella paper, it's, it's a nice weight of paper that um, glue works well on. So I, sometimes if it's a really thin paper, it might make it ripple, but the Chow Bella is good. All right. So just add your card to... I'm gonna do my little trick. So if you haven't joined this before, I'm, I only peel part of my tape back so that I can adjust it uh, without the whole thing sticking down when I don't have it in the exact spot I want. All right, so, so it's gonna just grab a little bit and then I'm just gonna peel my tape away. If you pull it straight down, it works. If you pull it off to the side, your little um, tape protector pieces, sometimes you'll get a little piece of tape that kind of comes off to the side. Just, you can cut that off with a craft knife, but if you do it straight down, you don't get that, so. All right, so we've got this piece done. So now what we need to do is we're going to create our border strip here. So this is a strip of craft cardstock. It's three quarter inches and it spans the whole width of the card. So this is five inches. So it's three quarter inches by five. In well, actually it's just, I think I'm seven eighths inch. And the reason I did that, my little pieces fell on the floor. I just have to grab them here. The reason I made them that size was to use the stencil. So we're going to use the stencil today in this design as a, an embossing folder, really. So I just wanted this design. So this design is the, so stripes one way, stripes another way, which is this part of the stencil. So the three quarter, in, or the, it's like seven eighths inch, if it was three quarters, it doesn't really matter, um, is, going to just get that design in this embossing folder. So that's what we're going to use. And then um, we also, so if you want to cut your, if you have craft card or if you have another color card stock, it doesn't matter. You can, even if you had black or something that would work as well for this design, especially with the um, angel fish being, having some black in them. So you need, need two strips that seven eighths inch by five because I did the same thing in the boat card. So we can do those things together. I used one of the different, a little bit different design. I used the sort of triangular pattern, which is this one. I use this one for that because I thought it looked maybe more like waves, but <laughs> um, I thought we needed to use more designs from these, uh, this stencil. So, if you wanna go ahead and cut those two strips, so five inches by about seven eighths inch, then we can go ahead and emboss them. We can actually probably do it at the same time. So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Um, for the plain card, maybe you wanna cut your uh, craft card for that one as well. That's one and three quarter inches by four and a quarter. So one and three quarters wide by four and a quarter. Because again, it's gonna span 
the uh, width of the card. And this is an A2 size card. And then we can, we can emboss all of that uh, together. So I'll give you a couple minutes just to get your craft card uh, strips cut. Okay, so in the chat, people are saying alcohol and pixie powder cards. Okay, we did some pixie powder last week, but we can do that again. Somebody's saying chow bella, more chow bella, which we can do as well. All right, so keep giving me some more ideas. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's, I'm going to show you how to emboss with your stencils. So if you have if you have a smaller machine, I have a large machine, so there's no problem, the stencil's gonna fit through. If you have a smaller machine, I have a smaller um, die cutting machine that's an A5 size, so half of this size. So it's about, it can accommodate maybe six inches wide, and this is seven inches. So then what you could do is you can always cut your stencil. So if I was going to cut the stencil, then I would want to cut it along a pattern that, so here, so I want, I want it to be about six and a bit inches. What's this? This is, yeah, it's about half, um, but you've got a little bit of play on either side. So you could probably cut it right along this line here, then you have like a corner stencil and you have this piece because you want to be able to use the longer strips as well if you had a, a five by seven card or something and you wanted to emboss a strip. So that's how you might be able to use the stencils um, if you have a smaller machine. Otherwise, what you do is you put your rubber mat. So this is a rubber mat. Most machine die cutting machines come with a rubber mat. Um, and then you know the sandwich that goes with your machine. I just have to adjust my machine because it's, it's the um, press boss that I can adjust the depth or how, adjust the rollers to create different uh, amounts of pressure. So to do this, this, so, I want to do it this way. So I'm going to put my paper down and then I'm going to put my stencil on top. And I can see my little piece of paper. It's probably hard for you to see um, through the camera, but I can kind of see it through my stencil. So I'm just going to try and make it even so the pattern looks uh, good. So that's the one I was going to use for the first card we're making. The, the turtle and the angelfish. And then this one is for the uh, boat card. And I'm just going to put that right beside it. You can use the same pattern if you want. You can use a different pattern. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the one that I did in my initial um, design. And then I'm just going to put this on top. And I'm going to run it through my a die cutting machine. And what happens is the rubber with the pressure, the um, stencil goes into the paper and the rubber pushes the uh, paper up through the holes of the stencil. So I'm just running it through my machine right now. So you can actually use your stencils to add texture, so like embossing folders. So um, although a lot of times people just think stencils are to add ink into the stencil, you can see how you get a beautiful embossed pattern. And so you, and you can use parts of your stencil. So this is like a background stencil. We're gonna use it a little bit later just to add texture to our designs, but you can also use it like this 
as an embossing type folder. Um, so all of a sudden, if you have a lot of stencils, think of them as embossing folders as well. Sometimes you can't do everything you want to do um, that you could do with an embossing folder, but definitely it adds a whole other um, use for your stencils. And stencils have a great price point and they're in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. You have the slim line ones, you have uh, this bigger square one, um, or you have little tiny ones as well. All right, so we have these two done. Now, um, where's my, I think we'll just go ahead with this. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And then we'll have to do the, the last one again at another time, but we're going to be um, adding some texture to our designs as well. So we're gonna need those stencils. So now, got so many things I have to use to <laughs> I keep putting things away and then I need to find them again. Okay. So what we're going to do is add this to our card. And again, I'm going to place it trying to show as many elements as possible. So kind of in between the seahorse and the fish. So you can still see that there's fish there and you can see that there's the seahorse here. Now, before I'm going to add that to my uh, design, I'm gonna add some ink. So you can see here that if you just take um, an ink blending tool, and we've got so many of those, that you can just add a little bit of brown or sepia to your design. And that's gonna highlight your embossing um, from the stencil. So I'm just going to use, so there's so many ways you can add ink to your designs. Um, we're going to use a few of these today. Um, this is a little round ink, inking tool. Then they've just come out with larger tools with rounded. So this is a rounded shape um, pad. This is round and it has a circle, but it's flat. And then of course you have your blending brushes. So I'm gonna use this today or for this particular technique. And I have, this is VersaFine uh, Vintage Sepia ink. It's a pigment ink, so it can be used for stamping. Um, it can also be used because it stayed, pigment ink stays wet a little bit longer. You can use it to add some embossing powder. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to just add a little bit of ink to my design. And you can see that the embossing areas will pick up some. It doesn't have to be um, perfect. It's just to add some contrast and show up the embossing a little bit more. I don't want to get ink on my... All right, so it's sort of distressed. You can, it looks a little different shading in real life what I see here, but um, it's, you can see how it is different from the other design that we also created. And it's going to look really nice on our cardstock here, our cardstock, our card here. So, um, go ahead and do that. You might want to do both of them while you have your tools out. And then we'll attach it to the card design. I'm just holding it in my hand right now. Sometimes it's for certain designs, it might be easier to put it down on the, on your, uh, surfaced. If you have a juicy ink pad, sometimes you want to uh, blot off your, your inking tool before you add it to your design. This is pretty forgiving, the uh, sepia with craft card. All right, so 
I have both of mine ready to go. So I'm going to put the one aside for the boat card and I'm just going to attach this using some double sided tape. Oh, somebody, I just checking out the chat and somebody said working with rice paper. Yeah, I, I haven't done a lot with rice paper, but it is, they, we have some beautiful rice papers on the website. So um, that's definitely something we can think about the rice paper. All right, okay. I just put two pieces. There's, this isn't really gonna be a problem. Um, and so again, just line it up. It should go from edge to edge. You can always trim if you didn't cut it exactly. You can trim it with your scissors. Oh, I have to give up a little bit of the uh, seahorse's nose there to get a little bit more of that fish. All right. Oops. I thought it was going the other way. Okay, mine's just overlapping a little bit. So it's easiest if you go from the back and then, okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, we have the turtle. So the turtle we cut out already. What I'm going to do is just trim around the edge. So I've got a little bit of excess paper here. And then we're going to mat it also on some uh, craft cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this first and then I'm going to have a piece of craft card here and I'm gonna do the pencil trick again. I think I have, I, I'm pretty sure I have measurements in the instructions, but you can just do the pencil trick and then um, you don't have to measure. So that makes it a little bit simpler. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then what we're going to do is attach this to the card, and then we're going to run it through our machine um, to emboss it with the stencil. And that will create some texture. It's hard to see in the design. I think you can see it a little bit, but it does really add something to the card design. You, you actually do see the texture. So it gives it some interest. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And so if you want to go ahead and start um, trimming your, your turtle, that'll be good. So I've got my turtle here. You can probably do, why don't we trim everything? You can trim the, the plane and the um, boat because we're gonna do the same thing for all of it. We're gonna add them to a map. We're gonna map them with the craft card before we add them to our designs. These ones I just trim because they're smaller elements to the whole card. Uh, I'm not trimming anything off. It was just the larger element we needed to trim the angelfish design. When you cut it, maybe you cut it out with your trimmer. And so you're already have this, start, this step done. All right. Okay, so I can probably from this piece of scrap paper get both of these done. And then I'm gonna need another piece. Okay, so I'm just going to, we're gonna do the turtle first. So I kind of like this size mat, just move it into the center here. So you can decide what size mat you want, but I tend to go with about, um, an eighth of an inch. 
meaning that I usually add a quarter to whatever my dimensions are. Um, so I'm gonna do, that's for my turtle. And then for my airplane here, I'm gonna do the same. And if you wanna make a bigger mat, you can actually make a bigger mat around your design. And then I'm just gonna trim this. And then for the boat, I have another piece of paper. I'll grab that, but I'll trim these first. And don't, don't throw away any of these pieces because we're gonna have to cut our anchors out. So um, save that piece, that's a perfect size for the anchor. And then, so that's for my turtle. And this is for my plane. All right. And I have another piece here for my boat. I find when um, you mat some of these smaller elements, you can actually use some of your scrap paper that you might um, have been keeping. I always have lots of paper scraps that uh, I can use up. Also to cut like your anchors from, um, so it's a great way to use up some of your scraps. All right, so there's another little piece that I'm gonna use for anchors. All right, so I have all of my mats cut. So if you want to go ahead and add your elements to your craft card, then um, we'll be set to add these or to emboss them. That's what we'll do next. All right, here's my tape. Now I'm just, again, I'm gonna just use some double-sided tape, but you can use glue if that's your adhesive of preference. Sometimes I use a combination. I use, especially if it's a, not a nice straight edge to add to my design. Um, I might add a straight piece of tape and then either use sticky specs for a very intricate design or I might use glue for like a curved design just to make sure that the curve stays down. I'm sure through the classes, we'll, I'll show you that as a technique. And again, this, this is the Be Creative tape um, and it, it does tear, I just, always cut it so but you can tear it sometimes if my scissors aren't handy I will tear it but. somebody said in the chat about birthday cards Anna Anna said birthday cards always good to have birthday cards well any of these designs can be um used for birthday cards. It doesn't have to be a uh, Father's Day. Um, but I suppose there can be like specific birthday cards, like, like special birthdays where we add a number or something. So maybe we could think about that. And then I don't know how many people who are joining us today are uh, local, but uh, Ecstasy Crafts is having their open house at the store in Shannonville next, um, next Friday and Saturday. So if you have, have a chance to join us, there's four different make it takes you can do. And um, hopefully we'll be have a chance to do some demos. I was hoping to demo some of our new layering stencils, which are beautiful. And whatever else you might like to see, I'm open to 
doing um, whatever people want, or if you have something in your stash and you're not exactly sure how to use it, because it's been there for a while and you haven't used it. I think we all have those items. Um, then I'm happy to show you how to work with that. All right. All right, okay, so I have all of my designs that we're gonna use for all three cards uh, matted. And so now what we're going to do, because um, you can move to your machine in a minute, we're, we're just going to add some texture to the designs. So it's exactly the same thing we did as with the strips, but what I did was I just put it um, haphazardly, I guess. I, you could see if you want a particular design, but because you've got the um, actual design on the paper, you know, it doesn't really matter. I, it didn't matter to me um, how I oriented my um, stencil. However, it is kind of interesting here, I noticed, because we use this as a background, you can see it, it just almost looks like it flows into it, even though it doesn't, like it's not really part of that design. But um, because I inked around the edge after I embossed it, you can pick up the design and just show you there. Once you do it, it is quite, um, it, I really like the stencil for uh, this background sort of texture that you create. The turtle, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of similar. I had sort of triangles. You can see kind of there the triangles I had along the one side. Otherwise, it doesn't, it didn't really, I didn't plan it, put it that way. It was just because the, the pattern is repeating, um, it, it all looks fine with the design. And this one as well, you can pick up some of the around the edge. All right. So hopefully you've got your um, elements matted. So let's go ahead and emboss them. I'm going to just grab my plates here. <clears throat> now I only have my um, small rubber mat. There are larger rubber mats that you can get. Um, let's see how much I can do. I think I'm just gonna put it on like that. So I can do two and then I'm going to come back and do my turtle and my other piece um, of craft card for the plane. Then we can put the embossing or the stencil or the embossing machine away, I guess. All right, so I'm just running that through now. So you can you can just you can see it, and um, but you can see how the design here around the edge. You're gonna if when we take our inking tool, you'll that'll uh, be highlighted, and it looks very nice. Like, but you can see it. Like once you've done it, you can see it once you have it in front of you. It re, and then the back, you can see how it has the indents. All right, now, now if you have an, a stencil that, um, where's my last thing? Oh, my turtle. Um, if you have a stencil that has a pattern um, or a picture, then when you emboss it the way we just did, one side will look like the, like the picture and the other side will be the opposite. So always like you might just have to turn it around um, so I think a birch tree is a good example. Like you'll, it, um, it'll look like the picture on one side, otherwise it'll look like it's depressed. So you just have to turn it over if you wanna use that type of stencil as an embossing folder. Okay, so I have to do this one. And then I had my, I had this little piece 
for um, the airplane design. And so this one had the larger triangles in the middle here. That's what I used. So, so it might have to do well, that one. Just trying to do it together here, but then I can just probably slip this up here. So because this has an angled pattern, I'm going to do that. And then I might just see if I can, because I have to get it through my machine. All right, we're going to start again. I'm going to turn it this way and then I'll add. So this one, I want the tri the middle piece to be to create the design. So that's for the airplane. And then this one, I think I'm just going to put up in here. Is it going to fit? No, I'm going to have to do it twice. Yeah, it's just not going to work. Okay, we're going to do it twice. Because the silicone mats actually grip your paper, it doesn't really move that much. It's good. And that's why some of the um, mixed media mats. So um, we have some, Nelly has a, a mixed media type mat that grips your paper and then there's some painting. I don't know exactly what it's called, um, but the silicone actually sort of grips your paper, which is really nice when you're working with stencils. And Lisa Horton has a, um, it's kind of, what does she call hers? It's really for her embossing. It's the ultimate multi-tool. It's called the ultimate multi-tool. I have one um, close by. And it also has a nice silicone mat that really grips your paper when you're working with stencils. Now that, that tool is used to, with her um, layering stencils. So I'm gonna do a video demo of that. Um, so you have a better idea, but the silicone does grip it. Okay. So I have all of my items embossed. Um, ready to go for the card. So I'm going to put some of this stuff over here. And then the next step before we add the elements to our cards is to ink the edges. So again, take whatever inking tool you're using. Um, the other inking tools that would work for this, I like a smaller tool, is, are the um, finger daubers. So I don't know if somebody has the finger daubers. I have a case here of my finger daubers. Um, I, I tend to grab things and I don't really know why, but <laughs> when I'm doing something, I think, oh, I want that. So this is a case full of finger daubers, but we do also have finger daubers in, um, on the website, there are some. And then there's these inking tools and then there's refill little, um, the little pads that go on top. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just gonna do it to the outside edges. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just really distressing it. And if you, and sometimes I add it on top of the cardstock just to pick up or the pattern paper, just to pick up some of the design, because if you're using an ink that doesn't, um, it's not that different, it will just highlight, highlight the, the pattern. Right, so now I'm gonna do my plane. I think it's easier. I always think about what's the best order to do these cards in. Um, but I think if we do all the steps similar at one time, then we can just kind of put the cards together. Okay. 
just give it a shot. So you can see how the inking sort of picks up the pattern. And I do like the texture. So if you have a stencil that has multiple designs on it, and it's harder to do this sort of thing, this kind of thing to add texture to your designs, you really kind of need a background stencil, which has, um, you know, like this, which is which is a pattern. Although you can pick out the patterns, it's sort of all all covered. I have other stencils that have a specific, you know, one design here, a different design in here, a flower here, something else here. Those ones you can do the strip type embossing. So just cut your strip and then emboss with it. But it's harder to do this texture type um, effect. And they all have different uses. All right, so where am I at here? Okay, a minute. But the layering stencils are really quite nice. So with all different layers that help you just color flowers. So, well, flowers or whatever other design. The Lisa Horton has several layering stencils and their, their floral designs. And she has matching embossing folders with them. So they're really pretty. All right. Okay, so I think I've got my elements ready and I'm just going to sort of ink up this piece for my airplane card. Somebody commented, I think it's Sue Penner, said she hadn't used the mat with the um, stencil. Always trying to think of ways you can use your stencils, all your product in many ways, right? All right. So hopefully everybody's getting that. Okay, so Sue just said, what about a class using the Lisa Horton stencil? So Lisa Horton's embossing folders come with dies as well. So they are a lot of fun. So that, I think that would be a good class. That would definitely be a good class. So maybe we have to think about that. All right. So let's go back to our first card I was thinking we we're gonna make, our angelfish and turtle card. So we have our angelfish with our border embossing or a stencil embossing strip. And now we're just going to add our turtle element to the card. So Again, think about where you want it to be placed, what you want to see. And then I added it with a little bit of foam, um, foam tape, foam pads, whatever you have. I have some hunky dory strips here. So I'm gonna add a, some to the back and then I'm going to add that to my card because different dimensions on cards add a lot of interest. And I mean, people ask, like some people are really into mixed media, but this is kind of mixed media in a little way because we've added dimension to our designs and to the design itself. And then we're adding dimension overall to our card. So, and I'm just going to put it over top. I think I need another little piece in the center. Otherwise, it just sort of wouldn't go well through the mail, I guess. 
So, so once we have these elements on, I think we'll go to the next. We're gonna add an anchor to this design, but let's just put everything together. Then we can add our anchors because we have to cut those still. All right. So that, so in this design, I added an anchor, which we got with the die set and I add a little piece of string. So we'll add that later. And then a couple other, out, uh, just little finishing touches. I added a few jewels. I don't know if you can see that they're tiny little clear jewels, just to add like some sparkle in the water. I did add some mic micro fine glitter to the angelfish, but I don't think the camera is gonna pick up that subtle glitter, but you could do that. And then I used, if you joined us for the Belfleur class, you got some enamel dots. So I used a couple of the, they're kind of a gold copper, rose gold, maybe rose gold um, enamel dots. So I put those in each corner. All right. So we'll, we're gonna do a little more decorating, but let's, let's put together the other cards. So we have that first one. And then um, let's do let's do the plane, I think. I know I said we were gonna do the boat, but the boat we have to get a background sheet of paper for. So the plane, I'm just gonna clean up here a minute. What I did before I added the, the so we have our embossed strips. So I'm gonna, add, this is the embossed strip is I, uh, I actually, and I don't, think, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can see it a little bit. I used a stencil to, to um, stencil some blue. And the idea behind the blue was that it was blue for the sky. Um, but I wanted to use the stencil in the way that most people think to use a stencil. And I thought this lent itself um, to that. So, all I did was I just put, I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper because I always go outside. Is you can, you can be, place it the way you want it, but I'm, I, it doesn't really matter. It's a pretty abstract uh, design and we're going to cover a lot of the background with the elements. So, um, so I'm just gonna put it here. I'm gonna try and make it straight, but really doesn't matter because it's on an angle. So for this um, stencil to actually create the design, I'm gonna use a blending brush. Um, this one is a blue and because you can, you can get many colored handle um, blending brushes. We have, um, we have some from Studio Light and we have some from Nelly. Um, and Nellie's choice, they're brown with, with um, kind of a brown color bristle. So that doesn't really show the color of the ink that you're using. Um, because I use so many different color inks, it's nice to have one assigned to each different sort of color family. So I'm just gonna use some pigment ink here. It's just a small little ink that I have. And I'm just going to, rub it over the stencil. I'm just dropping it, tapping it off a little bit. Again, if you had a silicone mat, you could pick this up again, which I find great too. Um, whoops, I moved the shade. Again, that's, you might want to adhere it. Um, this isn't, it's just sort of to add some interest to the background. So it's not too, I'm not being too fussy, but I am holding my stencil down. So just rub over the stencil and then it creates the pattern. So the plastic piece will be white and you'll have The, uh, the pattern blue. 
And again, I'm not making this very dark because I just wanted a subtle background for the sky for the sky because of the plane. So you can see there that very easily we've created a stencil background, which you could use for another card, right? I mean, it's very pretty and it's very subtle, which is nice. And if you wanted to have it darker, you could easily have it darker, or you could even emboss it first and then add color to it as well. So lots of, lots of different ways to use this, but today it was just to be a background for the plane. Okay, so now, what we're going to do is we're going to add this strip and it doesn't matter. You can, it doesn't really matter the way it goes. Um, and I'm just gonna add this with some double-sided tape. Now, the one thing that I did do with the plane is, I'll show it to you in a second. I add a little bit of uh, shine to the wings. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that with um, a Versamark pen. If you don't have like glossy accents or something, which is like a liquid based product. Cause we're going to also make one of our anchors a little bit shinier. So we're gonna do that too. Oh, my time. Mm, okay. All right. So where's my plane now? Okay, so here's my plane. So all we really have to do for the plane is add it to the card design. Now, in the example, I did add a sentiment here. You could stamp something. Um, you could you could die cut. This is a die cut. The, the Hunky Dory Moonstone um, Simply Sentiments, I think it's called, or say it with sentiments, I think. Um, so I just thought, okay, we'll put celebrate there. Um, but in order, so to make, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, you can a little bit. You can see that I have a little bit of shine there on the wings. So the way I did that was I used a Versa marker. So this is Versa Mark ink in a marker format. And um, it has two ends. So it has a small end for tiny areas and it has a larger sort of brush type end for larger areas. So what you have to do is you need some, uh, well, you need the pen and then Versamark, I don't, for those of you who don't know, it's called a watermark, but basically it's a sticky ink that you can use with embossing powder. And so when I, wherever I put it, and then I, I put some embossing powder over top, it's going to adhere to the sticky ink. And then I'm going to use a heat gun and I'm gonna melt the embossing powder. So it becomes shiny. So it's a way to add some shine uh, to different parts of your design. And it does actually make quite a difference. So those of you who don't have the Versamark uh, ink pen, then it's something you might want to get. But what I'm going to do, I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to, it's just like a marker, but it stays wet. So I'm just going to do this. There, we also have a similar type marker from Couture Creations. They're both on the website. Um, if you search uh, Versamark, all our Versamark products will come up and you can, if you might have the Couture one. All right. I like using clear embossing powder because it doesn't cause any problems. I'm just going to put this on over here. Any problems, meaning if, if, if I get some extra, oh yeah, because you're going to get a little bit extra. Oh, I meant to, over the, um, might get a little bit extra over your edge. I should have used my um, 
anti-static tool, but this will be fine. Because I didn't really go in the center. Right. And you can do this and, and actually create several layers if you want it. We'll just do one. I do have my heat gun, so you're gonna hear the, whoop, I don't wanna put my heat gun. Oh, I have this open. So you'll hear the heat gun noise and I'm just going to heat it. Sometimes if it's still hot, you can add another layer. I don't know if I did it fast enough, but a little bit. And that just saves you from redoing the marker, but you could redo the marker. But you can also do this if you have like a liquid uh, glossy accents, or there's Nouveau crystal drops. I think we're getting some of those into the retail store. I'm just going to heat this again. Okay. All right. And of course, if you had a, a glitter or sparkle embossing powder, you could add that as well. Um, but it just adds something to the design that you actually have a little bit of shine um, in the design. All right. So now what we can do is we can just add this to the card and then you can add your sentiment. Again, I'm gonna just use some foam strips that I have here. If you have foam tape, you can use foam tape. Or if you have big, Hunky Dory has some big um, squares. Or you don't even have to add dimension if you don't want. All right, so I'm just going to So this card's actually almost done. I mean, I'm not gonna add the sentiment, but. That's just sort of offset. All right. Okay, so we kind of finished the plane first. Right. All right. And then in the paper, there are, I had, I, where's my, here's my ship. There are little, this is like a little tag from the paper pack. And I stamped the dream a little, but there is, there's little tags like this that you can use. So you could always choose one of those to add as a, and then add a sentiment to that. So it does have the same sort of color scheme as, as the rest of the paper. So um, there are those things that you could add sentiments to as well. It almost looks like that just came with the dream a little, but it wasn't, it was blank. So you could just add your own stamp. Um, I stamped it and then I did, uh, and heat emboss it with some clear embossing powder. All right, so the next card um, we're going to make is the speedboat card. So the speedboat you already have completed. And so in this, there's a couple other things we're gonna add. And we also have the strip. So we can add the strip here to our five by seven card. Now I had it with the triangular areas going outward, but there's also sort of little dots and things. 
um, you can choose whichever way, or if you chose a different pattern, you can see which way you want it to be placed. And then we just need to add a background piece of paper. And I'm not sure which background I used for that, but I'm gonna find it. And then we're actually gonna stencil a little bit here. And for this, I actually, um, because I use pigment ink, I could add clear embossing powder to it. And then um, again, it, it just looks shiny. So another way to use your stencils um, and make, just add a little bit, um, something special to it. So let's, I'm just gonna add this first. I have to look through that. Right. Okay, so we have that. And then I, you can see in behind here, this is the background. So I'm gonna go through my papers. So it was one of the backgrounds. I'm just, oh, I think it was this one. Usually what I do if I'm gonna use a background piece is I look at the, the other side and I say, okay, what area of this these different elements do I wanna use? And no, I don't think it was that one. It's hard to see when you've covered most of it up because you're going to cover most of it up, right? So it doesn't, um, oh, I did, I used part of this. Oh, I think because I didn't really, I thought this was a nice, or this one I thought would be the least, least one I would use. Um, so that's, that's what I used. I cut, I think I just cut this square out. So I'm going to just do that from here. So that was the background. So it was, it has the bird with the plane and the eagle here and the, uh, I don't know what flower that is, but the botanical one. Um, and then this, this is just like a, a all of the elements table. Um, so, so I cut it out, but I could make it a little straighter because it doesn't have to be a particular size, this part because it's just kind of abstract, right? I had just used it here and then I offset the boat. So there's no specific measurements for that. Um, so this is where if you had like some scrap paper, just use some scrap paper um, for this, which is what's kind of nice, like it's a little more abstract. So I'm just gonna place that here. And then I can put the boat on top and just create a little bit of a pattern so that it's, it's framed there. All right, so I'm just gonna add this because what I did was I stenciled over top of it. So um, you may choose to do this or not, but I just wanted to uh, use a stencil and I, I did decorate this one on the inside. So I used one of the strips the leftover strips and added an anchor and then just embossed a piece of the stencil. So you don't have to do the whole card. You could just do a tiny little piece of, of um, inking through the stencil to add a little bit of a pattern to the inside of the card. All right, so let's add this piece of paper. 
to our card design. And then we're going to ink through the stencil to create the pattern and we're going to heat emboss. So most of you I'm sure know that pigment ink um, stays wet a little bit longer. So it lends itself to adding some embossing powder. If you wanted to, if you use dye ink, so you don't have um, pigment ink in the color that you want to use, then uh, use the stencil with an ink through the stencil where you want it, and then clean off your stencil. And then you can use one of the ink blending tools or one of like a finger dauber or whatever. And you can add then Versamark ink to the, through the stencil and then add embossing powder. And then you can create the same sort of effect that we're going to uh, do today. All right, so I'm just going to put that sort of here. And then I'm gonna get my paper. All right. So now I just have to stencil. All right. So for this design, I just use the corner piece. It's easiest to put, to line it up with your paper. And I just actually inked with one of these tools. Um, so that I would create, so I got quite a dark ink color. That was my um, goal. Whereas in this, um, in the inside of the card, my goal was just to have a light shading in there. So to, this is easier to create light shading with a, a blending brush, um, but you can really get into the stencil with an, uh, an ink blending tool like this. So it's always good to, if you don't have certain tools, tools are things that you use all the time. Um, it's nice, you know, as you, you just keep adding to your tool collection, just like you add to your stash of other items. But all right, so I'm just inking in here. And again, I'm not, um, I didn't attach it. And I'm going over all the layers. So it was a corner of, so the cardstock and the uh, pattern paper. Okay, it's hard for you to see, sorry. Okay. All right, so I kind of have it inked there. I'm now going to, You can see there the design now. I'm just gonna put my stencil away because it's got some ink on it. It is pigment ink. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my clear embossing powder over here. And I'm just and so, I don't know, you can't really see that, but it's covered with the clear embossing powder. And now all I have to do is heat emboss it. Now I can leave that. And because the um, embossing powder is already adhered to it, it's not going to dry. There's no time limit to when I add the emboss or when I heat it. So I can clean everything up before I heat it. Okay. So I'm gonna go and heat that, heat this now. So you're gonna um, hear my heat gun again, and then you'll just see it turn a shiny brown. So you can see the little bit of a glare there. So that's that's a way you can use your stencils to create. So with the Versamark, um, either Versamark on top of dye ink or just with pigment ink, 
you can create a shiny element to your designs. All right. Okay, so now we can add our boat here. And then what I did do with this design was I added, you can see a little bit of sparkle here. So I added a little bit of uh, iced snow or just kind of like a chunky glitter. This is iced snow. Um, and all I did was I used my um, acrylic glue or my Dries Clear Creative Expressions glue and just put it where I wanted the glitter to be and then put a little bit of glitter over it and then just let it dry. And so you get that little bit of sparkle just where the boat would be on the water. So I thought that was kind of fun to add to the uh, design. And then we're gonna add our um, anchors. All right, I'm just looking for my phone. Oops. Oh, here we go. So again, I added this with some dimension. Um, it just adds a little more interest to your designs. I'm down there. Oh, that should be all right. And then we're going to add our anchors and we'll add the little bit of rope to the corners. So if you wanted, you could go ahead and add that glitter to the design or you can leave it to the end. I tend to like to leave things to the end because then I can set it aside and it'll dry and I won't uh, mess it up if I'm still adding things to um, the designs. Okay. All right. So hopefully everyone's sort of at the same stage. Um, if you're finishing up a few things, then those of you who are ready to add some anchors. So if you haven't had a chance to die cut some anchors, then go ahead and do that. I have some of my cardstock that was left over from earlier. So I'm going to cut a few. I did cut some earlier to layer them to create a thicker anchor. Um, but you can just use a single one. And then, so cut two anchors. You can cut three if you like. Um, this one's just gonna, I just put one on the inside. Um, I inked it a little bit, nothing fancy there. And then we're gonna add them to our designs. And this one we're going to make shiny. So that's another um, thing you can do with smaller die cut designs is add that shine. And again, that's just dipping it in Versamark. Slightly different than if you had a pen, you could color it with the pen, but it's easier just to uh, dip it into a pad. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So go ahead and cut out two of the anchors. I know I didn't try to cut two out at the same time, but you probably could with this die. Sometimes if I'm making um, lots of cards, which is most of the time, <laughs> I try and cut two together if that's possible. This saves you time. All right, let's see. Most simple designs you can cut two of together, like circles and um, squares, those kind of things. Simple designs. If you have an intricate type of pattern, it's a little more challenging, but it depends on the die and the paper you're using really. It is about the paper too. The thicker the paper, the harder it is to cut two together. But um, yeah, this, this worked. So I do have two designs. All right. 
So if you're using, um, if you wanted, I mean, part of the thing we said we would do today was how you can, you know, make some of your smaller dies into embellishments. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the birthmark first because the other one's pretty simple. So this is a birthmark pad. I actually checked the website, we're out. Um, and I uh, did contact Dennis who said that they are coming in. They should be in next week, the birthmark uh, pads. So uh, these again, it's kind of a staple to have in your stash. Um, now you can tell it's usually a nice tan colored ink pad, but I've used it for a variety of things. Um, there is, <clears throat> so the one nice thing about Versamark, and we do have other re-inkers, is that you can get a re-inker. And so we do have, a, have some of this. And so we, um, once your pad gets a little bit dry, then you can just squeeze some of the re-inker over it, and then it's good to go again. So we do, we are getting more and more re-inkers in so that once you have some of the dye colors or even like the Versamark, you can just get a re-inker. So you can keep the same pad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my die cut face down. So front side down onto my ink pad. And I'm just going to get some of the sticky ink onto it. And then what I'm gonna do, so now you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but it's kind of shiny. And I'm going to just pour some clear embossing powder over this. I do this for a variety of different um, cards. I have a, oh, I was trying to think of what I could show you, but I do have a, a fall leaves card where I ink the leaves just with pigment ink so that they're all different colors. And then I, I put, some, I, I, um, well, I use the pigment ink. So then I can just put some clear embossing powder over it and then it creates a shiny ink or shiny leaf design, which looks really nice. Um, but that is another thing you can do. So I'm just going to. It is um, good to use tweezers when you're going to do this because when you have to hold it to heat it with your heat gun, holding it with tweezers is the easiest way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this again so I can create a shiny anchor. You can see how the, there, that's good. Compared to, let me see if I can try it. But it does make quite a bit of difference um, to have the shiny anchor. And, and it's, it's pretty easy. Just dip it into the Versamark and then you're good to go. Or if you, you could dip it into pigment ink, I guess, if you wanted. So if say you had white paper, you didn't have brown paper. You could just dip it into the, um, the Versafine ink pad and then uh, put embossing powder on top as well. Um, somehow I think that seems a little messier to me. The Versamark is just kind of a sticky ink. It, your fingers don't get brown from doing it. Um, so now we have a, now I could have inked this before I dipped it in but it looks, it looks really good like this as well. Now, if you wanted to make this, my craft card is a little bit thin. I could add a few behind it to create a thicker element. Um, I cut some, I have my white paper is my thickest paper. So you could always just add some white behind. And then when you put it on, you don't really know, or you could ink around the white if you wanted um, so that it doesn't it doesn't look white because you can see at the bottom that it would be white but I could take uh, my inking tool and just make it brown let me see if I did that and then you won't see it 
if you wanted it thicker. Today, we're not gonna do that, but that's a way. And then you can always use up your, your, um, your little bits of paper, all your scraps. Use them up by um, making them a little more dimensional or sturdy. Okay, so you can go ahead and ink one of your um, anchors because we're going to add that to the the angel and turtle card if you want to add that. I think when you add ink around designs, like to the edge of them, it just, it makes them a little more dimensional. It just seems more real than if you leave it um, as plain cardstock. All right. So in the designs, I like to use other types of, of um, things that I have. So I, I want it to look realistic. So for this, I added some twine and that's because, you know, it, you, you would have rope at the mooring uh, place for a boat or an anchor usually, well, it has chains, but it used to have rope. Um, so I had some, this is just twine I had, or I, from, uh, I think, I'm sure I got it at Michael's, but just a roll. You can get it in different colors. I think I have red as well. Um, and then I just add it to, so I'm just gonna tie a simple, simple knot like this. You can see it there. And then it will, cause I'm gonna create some corners here. So we added, see, I just did a corner, but that's all you have to do and just cut it. And then I just use the uh, dry clear glue and that adheres it to the corner. So I'm just gonna trim it. So I'm just gonna tie a couple knots and then we're gonna tie, tie it through the anchor. So I'm just gonna tie it. I did the same thing and I just tied it. So it's like not a fancy knot, but um, when you adhere it with glue, it's going to keep, uh, it's gonna stay flat, but the anchor is not really attached, which is kind of fun for um, an element. I'm just gonna tighten that a little bit. And so I'm gonna do the same for the other anchor for the turtle. Where'd that one go? Oh, here we go. So if you have some like, I don't know, twine in your kitchen for, I don't know, whatever you're gonna use it for. This one kind of has, it's thicker in, in parts and thinner in other parts. Um, but it's kind of fun to add little rope or twine things to, especially to masculine type cards, um, instead of like a pearl or a jewel or whatever. It's, so I'm just trying to make them even here. All right. So I don't know if everybody had a little bit of twine or not, but you can always save your elements and add them later. I think I need, no, I have one more corner here. Oh, yeah, I'm just watching the time, but I think we're good. All right, so you do need a fair amount of glue. Um, so I usually, like to pick out where I'm going to put it. And then I 
put a nice glob of glue. So this is the glue here. And then I just, because I'm going to use the shiny one here, I'm just going to dip it in the glue and just let it dry. This is dry clear glue, so it's not going to show up. You can see there's a little bit of, of white there, but that's all going to go away. So there, so that's going to attach that. And then I'm going to do two corners here on top of the, or just, just off set. Now this, I'm going to, again, add a drop of glue and I'm gonna add a little bit down the sides for the little edge pieces. And I'm just gonna hold it here so you can see like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna add another one down here. Make sure, okay. Right. So I kind of start with a blob and then I take a little bit out. And the glue, if you don't want the edges to fray, then the glue, you can dip the edges in some glue if you like. Um, like on this, if you wanted, you could put a little bit of glue on each of the edge, the ends, and then they wouldn't fray. I don't mind the fraying. You can see this one's frayed here a little bit. I don't mind that. It's up to you, but the glue will stop it from fraying. I did that on this, on this design here, I added some glue. So you don't even see it, but it stops it from fraying. Okay, so that's the tip for stopping the fraying from your rope if you're gonna use little rope accents. All right, I think, oh, you can add your sentiment because um, maybe you have another sentiment, maybe it's happy birthday, maybe you're making the card and you don't know who you're going to give it to yet or for what reason. Um, so you can just leave that off and then add it um, when you're ready to. And so I'm just going to, I think I've done this card. I didn't, we didn't go ahead and decorate the inside, but you, you saw that you could decorate the inside. And I'm just going to add this anchor to my turtle here. So again, a little blob, hold it down. The dry is clear, the Creative Expressions um, acrylic glue, it, it adheres most things. It's really, really good. It is my favorite glue. And it, and it does it quite quickly, which is also when you're, you know, you're trying to make things, uh, but it does have to dry. All right, so we have that. Now you could add your, um, like in this one, I added the enamel dots from the Belle Fleur collection. They were, it looks like rose gold. And then I added a few little jewels. You can probably see a little bit in there, just through to add a little bit of sparkle like you might see in the water, but you could do that or not. And then I did add some microfine glitter over the angels, angel fish, just in the white section. Yeah, it's not gonna pick it up. Um, and then what we could do is we could just add, I'm gonna add, so here's my dry clear glue. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the area where the water would be here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the ice snow or chunky glitter. Sorry, I'm just knocking off and you can see there. Now it looks really white, but it's going to dry clear. That's the glue, it's going to dry clear. And then all you do is you just see the sparkle as you would see on the water in the sunshine. So, so that's kind of our class for today. Um, I'm going to show you 
the cards that we're going to make, and well, this is my, this has to dry, the cards we're going to make in the next class. So we're going to use the same kit. It's similar, similar techniques. So, um, but it's just other ways to incorporate different elements. And I wanted to use um, different themes, right? So this was the anatomy type theme. So again, we're, we're taking different elements and um, combining them into a card. And we're gonna end this again, we use the stencil for some texture and just how to incorporate the different elements. I did use some sticker lines here. It's hard to see, but there you can see it a little bit. So in the last kit, you received the sticker line sheet. So um, we did use, I, I used some of those. And then the one thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the little wreath die that came with the anchor set. And we're gonna use it um, as an embosser as well. So I will show, we'll go through that. I added some jewels because I thought this circular um, pattern lent itself to the, uh, the more astronomy card. So the, the astronaut with the telescope. Um, and then, we're going to make uh, use this bird element. And again, I added um, the sticker lines here. So if you don't, if you didn't get that kit and you have some stickers, then that's the only additional thing that we're going to use. And so we'll go through how to how to do that. So those are the three cards we're going to bake in two weeks. And then um, with everyone's suggestions, I'm going to try and figure out what we're going to do do um, for the next class. Now I see Nancy said, I haven't made an iris folding card in a long time. She could use a review. Um, I think so. I've got lots of ideas. So we'll have to come up with something. And then I always, um, I have another design to show you. Oh yes. So I usually try and have a bonus card for the blog. So I actually made this card, which is again using the papers, but I added a die cut plane. So this is a frantic uh, die cut or frantic biplane, um, which is a die cut that maybe somebody has, FRA9489. So this was one of the first cards I made from the, from the paper pack. So I added the um, plane. This is from one of the designs on the papers that we didn't use. And then what I did was I actually took out, so this was part of the design, but what I did was I cut it using my paper cutter where I could put it in and cut it, or you could use a ruler with a craft knife. And then I put it out, I matted it on some brown cardstock and then put it over top again. So it's raised, but it's all part of this same design. And then I added the, the plane. This is an embossing folder actually, but you could easily use the um, stencil that we use today to create the embossed type designs. So that's kind of the bonus. And then the plane wings, I also made shiny. You can just see that a little bit there to add some interest. This is just a stamp. Um, again, sort of that mixed media type um, technique. So that's, that's the bonus that's gonna go up on the blog. And then I made a couple cards as well. So Chalbella always comes out with different sizes of paper. And this was the 12 by 12 paper pack. It's here. It has similar elements, but they're all larger because it's a larger size paper. So this is the astronaut element. I did raise the, um, some of the planets here, made them shiny and uh, added some jewels here to, for the stars. So that's fairly simple. And then this is one of the background papers. So we're gonna use that next time. We're gonna pick out words from the background to add to our card. And then this was more the anatomy. And again, I was thinking graduation. These are some die cut elements. So a Marianne, this is a heartbeat. 
so it's actually the PQRS. <laughs> sort of uh, the way the heart beats, the electrical beat, there's a little heart there, and then um, a mortar board. These dies are available on the website. They're, the graduation hat die is FRA9495, and the heartbeat is CR1546. And then you can see that this is the background paper. So it is a little bit larger, but I thought this is great for somebody who's in the sciences as a graduation card. This was a stamp that just said, well done. Um, so those, these two were made with the larger uh, paper pa pack. So the 12 by 12. So if you wanted some larger elements, then um, you can always pick up that paper pack. All right, so I think that's it for today's class. And we did okay, 320. So hopefully people got most of it done. And if you didn't, we're going to um, try and get the video up. Um, we're going to try and, and use a little bit different format coming up, maybe the next class um, so that the video will be available. Our idea is to stream live to Facebook so that you, the recording will be available right away. Um, and then we can also send a link uh, to our website. So we'll, we'll update you as we move forward with that plan. I think we need a new Facebook group so it's easy to get the, um, you know where to find the videos instead of our regular Facebook page. Um, so I think that's all for today. So thank you everyone for joining us.